Hello my dear friends. Today I am going to tell you all in details about Nizim HKL. We are going to discuss in details about his powerful works from the examination point of view. So without wasting time, let's go towards the details of Nizim HKL. He was born on 16th December 1924 in Mumbai. He was a poet, actor, playwright, editor and art critic by profession. His father's name was Moses HKL. He took his last breath on 9th January 2004 in Mumbai. Let's talk about honors and rewards. But before that, let me tell you that Nizim HKL was a base maker in post-colonial India's literary history, specifically for Indian poetry in English. He had received Sahitya Academy Award in 1983 for his collection Latter Day Psalms by the Sahitya Academy, India's National Academy of Letters. He had also received prestigious Padma Shri in 1988. In his important works, we have received Enterprise, Night of the Scorpion, Goodbye Party for Miss Puss Party is, Poet, Lover and Bird Watcher, etc. We will discuss poetry, enterprise in details. Okay, Let's talk about the poem or poem. You can pronounce it in both the ways. The, po the poem talks about a metaphorical journey taken up by some enthusiastic people. The poet is also a part of the journey. The rhyming scheme of the poem is A B A B A. It depicts undulating ways of life. It depicts both the aspects of life, sadness and happiness. It voices out the sadness and joy which are part of life. This pilgrimage is said to achieve a specific goal. The poem consists of six stanzas having five lines each. Let's give a glance at summary of the poem. He talks about his involvement in the pilgrimage. All of them were energetic and enthusiastic, so their minds were full of joy and excitement for the pilgrimage. This joy and enjoyment lessened the load of the pilgrimage. Thus, all the problems and difficulties that they were yet to face seemed to be nothing before their enthusiasm. This was the initial stage of their pilgrimage. This stage can be compared to the early youth of man in which he is quite innocent and unaware of the problems and failures of adulthood. With this enthusiasm and vigor, they enter the second stage of their pilgrimage. The second stage of their journey was full of troubles and difficulties. The sun, that symbolizes harshness of nature, was burning hot. It tried to neutralize the fire of enthusiasm that was burning in them. However, it failed to kill their burning desire. The innocence of first stage withers away in the stage. The second stage, in the second stage, the poet says that he thought that they succeeded well in facing all the difficulties coming in their way. On their way, they kept themselves busy by noting down the things sold and bought by the farmers. They also noted down the ways of snakes and goats as well as the description of the three cities where a hermit was teaching lessons. However, they didn't notice what he was teaching. In the second stanza, the poet wants to tell how people get distracted from their goal when they are on the journey of their life. They waste their energy in doing useless things. In third stanza, soon the pilgrims reached a stage where differences of opinion arouse among them arguing about how to cross the challenging landscape. As a result of one of the members of the group who wrote the most stylish prose and was intellectual leaves the group and goes his own way. Thus, the shadow of disagreement fell onto their enterprise and continues to grow. The ego of thus people weakens the integrity of pilgrimage. In third stanza, now they reach another stage of pilgrimage where they have been divided into groups, each attacking the other, forget forgetting all about the aspirations that united them for pilgrimage. As a result, they lose their way. In other words, the goal and purpose of the journey was lost. Being, un being unsatisfied with the leader, some quit the group. Poet being helpless could not do anything and thus starts praying. The leader feels that they were near to the sea, that is the destination which was very near. 
In fifth stanza, however, soon they become aware of the fact that it was false hope from the leader as they find nothing on the way. They were now a group of aimless and hopeless wanderers. Their noble aspirations wither away. They could not hear the thundering of inner self, nor could they interpret what it meant. They were now without even petty things like soap. Being totally exhausted, some of them would not walk anymore, while some bent down with pain. Thus, the enthusiasm fades away and their burden is unbearable. In sixth stanza, the pilgrims, exhausted, tired and frustrated, finally reach their destination or goal. However, there is no joy of fulfillment on their faces. Instead, instead, they wonder why they undertook the journey, as it now seems to be meaningless and unworthy of the undertaking. They forget their noble aspiration. Everyone is hopeless. None of them find anything heroic in their journey, as a number of other pilgrims had already achieved the goal. For the poet, living at home with inner satisfaction is the biggest achievement of all. Hence, the journey that started with enthusiasm ends with grief, despair, regret and hopelessness. Next poetry is Night of the Scorpion. The poem Night of the Scorpion by Nizim H. Kiel is about an incident that the poet has not forgotten in his life. It was a night when a scorpion bit his mother and all the superstitious villagers did irrational things rather than helping her. Here, the poet exposes the superstitions that dominate the minds of Indians and also the motherhood of a lady who is just only of her children, even in the worst condition. The poem has, the poem has no rhyme scheme. It is written in blank verse. It has eight stanzas with a different number of lines in each. Let's talk about the summary of the poetry. In stanza one, the poet says that he remembers well that night when her mother was stung by a scorpion. The poet is of the views that the heavy rain which lasted for 10 hours made the scorpion crawl beneath a sack of rice. The last phrase shows poet's sympathy towards the scorpion. In stanza two, the poet says that after biting his mother with its diabolic or monstrous tail, the scorpion went back to rain outside again. The poet here shows sympathy as well as anger towards the scorpion. He is angry when he talks about its biting and sympathetic when he talks about its going to rain again. In stanza 3, hearing about the incident, the villagers rush to the poet's home. However, he is not happy with them. He calls them swarms of flies who budge the name of God a hundred times to paralyze the evil one. In stanza 4, the poet then explains how the villagers searched for the scorpion. According to them, according to him, the villagers began searching for the scorpion and their shadows themselves seemed to be like a giant scorpion on the mud baked walls. The villagers begin searching for the scorpion because they believe that the poison spreads across the body with the movement of a scorpion, so if the latter is stopped and paralyzed, the poison effect can also be controlled. In stanza 5, having failed in finding the scorpion, they begin giving their own interpretation to the biting of the scorpion. Some of them said that his mother's sin, which he committed in his previous birth, have been forgiven. Others assumed that she is going to die and said that the pain that she is suffering from will decrease the trouble in her next life. Some others put forward her good deeds will be balanced against her bad deeds because of the bite of the scorpion. In stanza 6, some others said that the poison will purify the refresh, purify and refresh her flesh of desire and her spirits of ambition. All of them seem to be in peace because of their thoughts. In stanza 7, more and more people come with candles and lanterns. His mother is, however, crying and rolling on the mat with severe pain, but nobody cares for her except for his father, who is sceptic and rational. He leaves no stone unturned to cure her. He uses powder, mixture, herb, hybrid to help her recover from the pain. He even poured a little paraffin upon the 
bitten toe and then fires it up. The poet watches the flames of fire burning on the skin of his mother. He also watches the holy man perform his rites to tame the poison with an incantation. The phrase again refers to superstitious people of the village who believe in irrational measures to cure a person. His mother ultimately recovers from the poison after 24 hours. In stanza 8, the last line is quite emotional and heart-touching. It reflects the motherhood of a lady. The poet says that after recovering from the poison, his mother's words were, Thank God, the scorpion picked on me and spared my children. Even in such condition, his mother remains more concerned about the safety and health of her children. Let's move towards another poetry, which is Goodbye Party, Goodbye Party for Miss Puspa T.S. The poem is a satire on the way Indian uses English language. As English is the second language, there remains a lot of influence of Hindustani where people try to talk in English and somehow the culture and traditional habits are also quite visible in their language. Zim Ejkil in this poetry narrates an incident when a lady named, namely Miss Puspa is supposed to leave India and her colleagues have arranged a goodbye party for her. The narrator, who is probably a man, uses Babu English, which is quite funny as he uses the Hindustani dialect and manners in it. The poem is quite long and divided into two parts. In part one, the narrator begins by announcing that their dear friend is about to leave the country and they have gathered there to bid her goodbye. He then starts praising Miss Puspa, saying that she is beautiful, not only because of her charms, but her honesty as well. She keeps smiling each time. Then, he then tells that she comes from a reputed family. Her father is a renowned advocate. The narrator does not remember the place and guesses that it could be Balsar or Surat. He then starts talking about himself. According to him, long ago, he had stayed in Surat with his uncle's friend's family. His wife used to cook very delicious food. In part two, having talked about himself, the narrator turns back to Miss Puspa's praise. According to him, she is quite popular as she does everything whoever, whenever asked to do. She never refuses. Now that she is leaving, he asks others to bid her goodbye. In the end, she asks others to praise her and finally Miss Puspa will sum up the event. The poem, Poet Lover Bird Watcher by Nizim H. Kiel, somehow seems to be similar to the lunatic the lover and the poet, an Elizabethan poem extracts from Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. The poem is about patience, which according to the poet is the only way for the poet, the lover and the bird watcher to succeed. In the poem, he describes that patience is the best action to achieve the goal. Like the lunatic, the lover, the poet, the lover draws similarities between the poet, lover and bird watcher. The poem has divided into two stanzas having ten lines each. The rhyme scheme of the poem is A, B, A, A, C, D, C, D, D. In stanza one, the poem with simple words that to force the pace and never to be still is not the way of those who study birds or women. That is, those who hurry and are impatient cannot watch birds or please a woman or compose a poem. The first poets wait for words. According to the poet, they hunt or struggle to watch a rare bird or please a woman or compose a poem does not require an exercise of will. That is, hard work but patience and love to watch slowly the movement of a timid wing of the rare bird on a tall patience ultimately pays. The one who waits patiently for the woman to love him back ultimately wins her as she cannot resist surrendering herself to him when she knows that he truly loves her. Love is nothing without patience. Similarly, the poet also needs to wait for the words that may come to him spontaneously. Those who wait patiently get the best words for their verses because they did not rush for the words. In stanza 2, the poet says that the slow movement seems somehow to say much more. That is, patience is more powerful than it seems to be.
To watch the rarer birds, one has to go along deserted lanes and where the rivers flow in silence near the source or near a shore which is far away and thorny, that is, full of difficulties like the heart's dark floor, that is, as deep in the forest as the core of heart, which is also deep and dark. This is how a bird watcher succeeds. Next, he talks about the love of the woman. According to him, to find true love, a lover has to go deep into the darkness of heart and there the woman is not only flesh and bone but myths of light that is mysteries that remains in the center of heart's darkness. The line means that the lovers of a woman, if remains patient, will be able to explore not only the physical body and its pleasure but the mysteries of a woman's soul which are more pleasurable. Similarly, when the poet also remains patient to wait for the words, his poem's sense is found, that is, he succeeds in composing a piece of art that the deaf can hear and makes the blind recover his sight. The poetic devices which are used in this poem are simile and personification. Remote and thorny like the heart's dark floor. Here, the use of like makes it simile. Personification. He is a spirit moved exercise of will. Here, we find human attribute is being given to inanimate object. Therefore, it is personification. So, friends, these are the four poetries which are extremely important for examination from Nizim H. Kiel's work. We will meet in our next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. And don't forget to come to our channel at 7.30 because every day we upload our new videos for examination.